Hi, welcome to today's uh, On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of some history books that you'll see behind me. Now, where am I taking you back to today? Well, I'm taking you back to the reign of King Henry VIII, but something that happened in France, not England. But on this day in Tudor history, the 20th of July, 1524, Queen Claude of France, who was the Queen Consort of Francis I, or Francois, died at the age of just 24, so very young. She died at Blois and was temporarily laid to rest in the chapel there, but then moved to the Royal Mausoleum of the Cathedral Basilica of Saint-Denis, which is just outside Paris, and she was moved there in 1527. The French historian Brantome declared that Claude's husband, Francis I, gave her the pox, which shortened her days. Now, when he says pox, he doesn't mean smallpox, he means syphilis. But actually, the cause of her death is not known for certain. Now, let me tell you a bit more about Queen Claude of France before I share some photos that Tim and I took of the tomb that she shares with her husband, Francis I. Claude was born on the 13th of October, 1499, and she was the eldest daughter of King Louis XII of France and his second wife, Anne of Brittany. Out of the 14 pregnancies that her mother experienced, only Claude and her sister, Renée, survived childhood. In 1501, the infant Claude was contracted to marry Charles, the future Charles V Holy Roman Emperor. However, this contract was cancelled in 1505 when an ill Louis XII decided that it was best to marry his daughter off to his heir, his first cousin once removed, Francis, Duke of Valois and later Duke of Angoulême, son of Charles, Count of Angoulême and Louise of Savoy. Claude became Duchess of Brittany on her mother's death in January 1514 and on the 18th of May 1514 she married Francis and on the 9th of October 1514 her father married Mary Tudor, sister of King Henry VIII. However, Louis's marriage was short-lived as he died on the 1st of January 1515. Then his daughter became Queen of France as her husband Francis succeeded her father as king, becoming King Francis I of France. Claude was crowned queen on the 10th of May 1517 at the Basilica of Saint-Denis, by which point she'd given her husband two children, daughters Louise and Charlotte. She went on to give him at least five more children, including Henry II, King of France. Due to her almost annual pregnancies, Claude spent much of her time away from the French royal court, spending her time instead in the Upper Loire area at the chateaus of Amboise and Blois. Claude attended the historic meeting between her husband and King Henry VIII at the Field of Cloth of Gold in 1520. And you may know that Anne Boleyn, the future Queen of England, who of course was Henry VIII's second wife, was one of Queen Claude's ladies, serving her from 1515, following the uh, return of Mary Tudor to England, um, until late 1521. Claude was a well-loved queen. The historian Brontom described her as very good and very charitable and very sweet to everyone and never showed displeasure to anybody in her court or of her domains. Queen Claude was petite and she suffered with scoliosis and also problems apparently with her hips. Theories regarding her cause of death on this day in 1524 include syphilis, complications after childbirth or a miscarriage, um, also exhaustion from her many pregnancies. She was pregnant on an annual basis. And another theory is bone tuberculosis. Claude's husband, King Francis I, after her death, went on to marry Eleanor of Austria, who was daughter of Philip the Handsome and Juana of Castile. Now, a little bit of trivia about Queen Claude. Queen Claude has a green gauge, a type of plum, the Reine Claude, named after her. 
So there you go. You might see it. Look out for that green gauge named the Wren Claude. Also on this day in Tudor history, the 20th of July, 1554, John Knox, the theologian and a leader of the Protestant Reformation in Scotland, published a pamphlet attacking the Catholic Queen Mary I, her religious measures and her persecution of Protestants. And you can find out exactly what he said in last year's video, which I'll give you a link to. Thank you for joining me today. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live and you can give me a like and leave me a comment. Take care. Bye-bye.